Well, good afternoon, folks. Um, welcome back to my channel. This is Lee, your virtual airline pilot, back with you again with another review video. Um, we are in South Africa. We are at Kruger Mpumalanga Airport in Nelspit Province at Foxtrot Alpha Kilo November. This is a new payware version by Pearl Simulations. Download is 602 megs and it installs into your community fold at 2.19 gigabytes, so just over 2 gigs. Currently available at Sim Market. Prices, um, it's 22 euros and 79 cents, which equates to 23 dollars and 87 cents US, or 19 pounds and 70 pence UK. US and UK prices are estimates and include VAT and tax, which of course may vary depending on which country you're in when you make the purchase. Those of you who follow my channel will have known that uh, a day or so ago I flew in here in the PMDG 737-700 South African Airways that you're looking at there on the ramp below us. And I recorded and filmed the landing and uh, quite enjoyed the flight actually. We came up from Cape Town. But this is um, a smallish airport, but it's a beautiful little airport, um, very, very nicely done. So let's get down low and let's just talk about a little bit about some history. Okay, so Kruger Mpumalanga International Airport, Foxtra Alpha Kilo November, it's also known as Kimi, KMI Airport, is a public use, privately owned airport located 16.7 miles or 27 kilometers northeast of Mbela in the Mpumalanga, South Africa. It replaced the much smaller airport of Nelspruit. Kimi Airport in Mombela sits at an elevation of over 2,800 feet or 863 meters and it's also the gateway to one of the world's most iconic game reserves, the Kruger National Park. The park contains the area's third largest canyon, the Blyde River Canyon, many ancient caves and a vast number of scenic and heritage attractions nearby. Kimi Airport was constructed in 2001 and started operations in October 2002 and the airport has served over 3 million passengers creating new opportunities for tourism and business in the province of Nelspruit. The terminal has a roof almost entirely covered by thatch making it the largest thatched structure in the whole of the continent of Africa. The airport is ICAO approved and also holds a Fire and Rescue Category 7 International Aerodrome license, which is a first for this province, and that's also the same license that's held by Heathrow International Airport in the UK, so it's just quite important. The airport is served by airlines such as South African Airways Airlink, Eurowings Discover, Fastjet Zimbabwe, and it's also a hub for Federal Air and provides passenger transport flights to other cities as well as regional destinations within South Africa. South African Airways Airlink service usually flies in here with Embraer 190 aircraft. So as you can see we've lowered the lighting a little bit to get a general look at the runway and the lighting generally as it exists on the airfield. Kimin Airport operates a single runway, 0523, which is 10,696 feet or 3,260 meters in length and is made from asphalt. Runway 05, and we're looking down the throat of runway 05 at the moment, is the only instrument landing system equipped runway, it's a standard ILS, but it also features RNAV, VOR and NDB approach options as well. This end of the runway is equipped with high intensity airfield lighting system and precision approach path indicators on the runway left side and you can see them there. We also have edge lighting, runway end identifier lights and we've got enhanced um, display threshold lighting as well. So again we've got a little bit more than the charts have specified but um, perfectly acceptable. Um, as I said on before, I'm a big fan of anything they want to enhance our landing up options. Runway 23, and we're looking down the throat of Runway 23 now, features only VOR and NDB approach options, but it's equipped with the standard airfield lighting system, which you can see there, no flashing strobes. And again, the precision approach path indicates a single one on the left side of the runway. Started, 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 
So the airport has 13 parking spots with four of them facing the terminal. You can see them here, Alphas 1 to 4. And an additional nine spots to the northeast side here, all facing this direction. The airport sits on a high plateau with mountains to the west and you can see the mountains terrain and this also looks like a plateau. There are one or two little elevation issues here with the road entry to the airport. We'll look at that in due course. So that's a history in the runways. Let's bring the daylight back up again and let's just go and have a little tour of this airport and see uh, what we think. So here we are at ground level on the ramp right next to the beautiful PMDG 737-700 for Flight Simulator 2020. Those of you who are thinking about it, yeah, go get it, it's lovely. This is a repaint that I found on flightsim.to, um, a very, very nice um, aircraft. Anyway, on to the scenery. Um, I'll say right off the bat, this is a beautiful little airport in a lovely location and it's been really well done on the outside. However, there are some bits and pieces that don't quite work and also I'm not really sure that the price is justified. It's a little bit high realistically for what's being shown here since we really just have the airport. Anyway, let's have a look at what is good and uh, I'll also take you through some bits and pieces that I'm not sure about. As you can see by looking at it at first glance, the detail is excellent and the um, clarity is stunning. I love the way the um, <coughs> The ramp here has been done, the tarmac is, is really, really good. You've got weathering on it. The taxiway lines are properly and clearly marked, as are the um, various numbers, stand numbers. The roadway here, all of these details are in really good order. As you can see, there's the stand numbers for the, for the other ones. Some lovely touches here, everything's really crystal clear. We just track back the other way. You can see how beautifully this is done. There's the airside fence down there. And there's the thatching on the roof you can see. The signage looks good. The flags really make this look quite nice. And you've got various bits of signage on the field. It's just, it's really, really nice. Very nice indeed. All of the ground markings out towards the runways and taxiways are excellent. The runway and the exits and various bits and pieces are exactly as per the charts. So really pleased about that. Here's the uh, 05N threshold with a displaced threshold here. Um, again, all works well. The ILS is, is, is excellent. I, I did an ILS approach in that video yesterday. So that all works fine. Here you've got a control tower. As you can see, nicely done. Lovely attention to detail here. Now there is some development in the control tower, which is strange, and I'll tell you why in a minute, but let's go in and have a look. So there you go, some nice detailing inside the control tower. You can see out through the glass, even though it looks a little bit misty, but the effect is quite pleasant. That's a nice shot looking towards the runway. Some nice detail on the radar screens there. And looking back towards um, the airport itself, and you've got the microwave and fridge on the left there because this place gets pretty hot in the summer. Again, you can look out through the glass um, and you've got a quite an interesting effect there. So it's a nice shot from airside looking landside across the boundary fence here. You've got the gate here and the fence line all, all really beautifully done. Buildings nicely modelled. All of the buildings are wonderfully modelled. Now, why did I say that the uh, control tower internal development was strange? Well, you've got these wonderful crafted buildings here but none of them have any internal development at all and that was a bit of a surprise for me so looking at this building nothing inside although it has a structure and this building again beautifully done on the outside signs air conditioning units but not much at all inside literally just a structure and that's about it but as you can see, the outside, they've gone to beautiful detail on the outside structure. Down here you can see um, this sort of little restaurant seating area here, even with the hanging baskets that you can sit in. And these beautiful little models, and again, the thatch roof looks fantastic. Now the air conditioning unit on the outside of the building. External modelling is excellent. Um, and I'm 
quite surprised that there's no internal modeling, especially for the price. So here you can see some of the little signage there and the uh, concrete and the roadway and the little plants, beautiful plants. We just track slowly across here. You can see the entrance again, lovely signage, very crisp. I love the boulders and the plants. And again, the roof looks brilliant. And there's the entrance to the terminal. A couple of baggage dollies there. The welcome sign. All of this has been nicely done. Uh, really, really nicely done. And the signs and the rhino over there. I mean, that's a nice model. And that's really nice, it's a nice touch. However, if we go into the main building here, this is the main terminal. I mean, they've stuck a couple of signs inside here, but uh, no nothing else. Okay, you have a structure. Um, we've got grass inside the building, which we shouldn't have. And okay, we've got a floor, we've got roofs, and we've got um, the uh, entrance and exit point here showing and one or two signs as, as I say this is all being seen inside the building which is a bit weird there's the other side of the building so let's just track through the building to land side so as you can see they have a structure but there's been no internal modeling here you've got grass and some sort of bits and pieces it looks like it's sort of half done that they're, they're sort of ready to go and do a bit more but that's about it they haven't got there yet they've released it before they finished it having said that here look landside you have the same attention to detail and the same crispness that's evident everywhere else even the car park I mean, the signage is good and the car models are beautiful really nice I love the overhead um, covers the whole thing looks really good I have looked at some pictures here of the original airport and I got it pretty close so let's just have a little look at the roads and stuff land side again um, it's really crisp it looks really good signage can't fault the signage the light poles look nice too. We'll have a look at the lighting and low light in a bit. Just really, really lovely here. Even up close, you see that um, sign really does stay quite um, crisp. Staff car parking. Wow, I wonder how many staff they have here. <laughs> There's a barrier. Overhead sign looks good. Again, going over the staff car park, you've got the same attention to detail, it's really, really nice. These are the bus stops um, where the buses come up and drop passengers off. Um, lots of little footballs, so I'm assuming that um, this place has some connection with football per se. But it's very, very nice. Nicely done. There you go with the signs. Very, very nice. So we've got this big sign up here, there's nothing on it, so I'm not sure why. And again, looking the other direction as we come away, again, nothing on this side. I don't know, something probably unfinished, I'm not sure. So here's the default view, looking out towards the country away from the airport. This is the exit road that comes out of the airport. And if I turn around to look back at the airport, there you can see uh, the elevation problems that we've got. Not sure if this is an Asobo thing or whether it's full simulations possibly not um, matching the airport to the terrain that they're fitting it into. Again, I'm not a developer so I don't really quite understand how this works. I know that you can terraform the terrain 
um, so that the scenery is worked properly. Clearly this hasn't been done here. Not sure whether they could do it or not, I don't know. But again, as I've said, it's these little things that kind of spoil the product and sort of drop it down a few points, if you will. Um, it's like it really hasn't quite been finished off. Um, this is a sort of a major thing for me, really, um, because of this is what started me thinking about how much, uh, whether, whether this scenery was really worth the price. All of this over here is without question fantastic, right up there with many of the other developers. Um, but then I started to find this elevation issue here. Beautiful buildings that have nothing inside them. And I get across to the control tower expecting nothing inside that and find it's been done. Um, and I'm a little bit confused really. But what I will say, even though things aren't don't seem to be finished, so you've got this big sign here that's blank um, and some other little anomalies. It is a nice product. It's a lovely scenery and I'm glad I bought it. As I said, disclaimer, I bought this. It wasn't given it to, re to review. I bought and paid for it and flew in here yesterday and the instrument bits and everything all works and I, I like it. But there are little, tiny little showstoppers here that make you stop and think. But looking at it from above, as I said, it's, it's another quaint little African airport and I'm so pleased that we're starting to get some of these now. Some of you may have seen my review of um, Bilankulo Airport in Mozambique. Um, have a look at that. That's, that's another beautiful airport that's been done in a similar style by a different developer. Anyway, let's turn the lighting down now and have a look at, see, we'll see what the lighting looks like generally at this place as, uh, at dusk. It's so, okay, just before quarter past five in the evening local time, and remember this is South Africa, it's in the southern hemisphere, so it's their winter at the moment. Um, for us it's June, it's mid-June, uh, 2022. So, uh, it's lovely. Again, the location really shows as the sun goes down, the mountains are beautiful in the background there. Um, and I've got it just as the light's coming on. It's really hard to sort of set the time properly because Osobo have this time slider rather than a plus or minus so you can't drop the time minute by minute which is a pity but looking at this generally this looks really quite pleasant it's a very very nice night scene let's go have a close look up on the ramp so there you can see the ramp and the terminal building and the lighting generally here on the airside ramp okay the airside ramp looks great lighting up there is quite good um, and I don't think you'll have any problems Looking out to the runway and the taxiway, again you've got the blue airfield edge lights which um, denote the sides of the um, airfield and you've got the signage out there on the runway which also looks quite good. We'll have a look at that in the total darkness in a minute. So the control tower and the adjacent building there is nicely lit. Not sure about this um, brilliant, brilliant yellow lighting. Um, doesn't look too, I mean, I'm not sure about it to be honest. Got some movement there on a truck which is quite pleasant, although it doesn't seem to be actually moving out or doing anything. Let's go and have a look at the inside of the control tower that was developed. So it's probably better to look from the outside, just give you a view there. As you can see there is lighting inside and that looks really pleasant. That, that's a bit more than acceptable, really pleased with that. And as you can see looking inside, it's, it's lovely, very nicely done, no problems at all. And there you go, looking out towards the ramp there, you can see perfectly fine. So the lighting drops pretty quickly here, sunset doesn't last too long, so let's get a look at this before we go into full darkness. As I've said, you can see ramp lighting looks quite good here, no problem at all, this, this is, is really nice, no sweat at all. This I am not sure about, this is looks to me to be way overdone. Um, but this may just be their answer to what they're capable of in terms of design. Maybe they can't do any more. This looks a lot better. There you can see that looks really pleasant. You got this strange sort of redness here as well that's coming along. It may be this may be an after effect or a result of the, the modeling of the color of this or whatever they've used the texturing here. But as you can see this is way over bright and um, not, not, not really um, what you would expect. However, get landside and it's a different story. As you can see, there's that beautiful little sort of restaurant come seating area there. Um, I love these hanging chairs that you can sit in. 
and the lighting here beautifully done okay you've got these these lights presumably represent the old style tungsten yellow lighting um, but they don't really give the tungsten yellow glow so this is I mean it's fine it's perfectly okay and it looks lovely it's a lovely little modeled airport it's just that um, they've been using techniques here that we're not used to in some of the shall we say the more advanced sceneries little tour along the landside road here past the terminal it's it's lovely it's really nicely done I've got no real complaints about the, the result um, some of the methods used to achieve this result okay as I said we're not necessarily used to um, these yellow tungsten lighting um, is all a bit strange really because it doesn't really look like the proper tungsten yellow lighting you see in airports like those in Tenerife for example where they still do have tungsten yellow lighting and again that looks fine it's perfectly acceptable and as we climb up there you can see the airport generally the lighting at dusk which is rapidly disappearing as you can see um, looks excellent it's no problem at all so another high level shot there showing the airport landside and the uh, the whole environment as it were um, and lighting wise it looks lovely and again that's uh, a stunning location mountains beautiful sunset let's turn it down to night time and see what happens right some 45 minutes later it's now 6 p.m local time as you can see total darkness now um, a light has come up and at first glance from here it looks like the light is is way over the top in some places but let's get out on the ramp and have a look um, from a pilot's point of view and see what that looks like and we'll also look at the runway lighting and signage okay here we are slightly high level shot from airside there looking at the ramp there's the light 737-700 parked on the spot there each of the spots are lit up quite nicely so where you sit there you'll have enough lighting but um, going into them looks a bit um, you're gonna have to rely quite a lot on your nose gear light so looking towards the runway there you can see the blue edge lights which donate the edge of the taxiway um, but as I said no center line lighting that I can see or we'll have a look up close in a minute and see if it actually is there so again you might be relying quite a bit on your nose gear light leaving the runway and coming down this taxiway so while we're here let's go close up to the ramp to, to the um, the runway and the exits and signage and have a look okay so here's the taxiway looking out to the runway as you can see blue airfield lights either side no centerline lighting so you're going to be relying on your nose gear these are the signs that denote a taxiway alpha out onto the runway but nothing on them to denote um, <coughs> that you actually got a runway ahead and you can't see anything in the dark let's go and have a look at them from the other side okay so I've got up close and there's nothing on the other side at all you can just see the lighting coming through the back of the sign and the same is true of the other sign there so we're looking the length of runway 05 and to the left there you can see the exit is marked only by the blue lights um, and as I said those yeah those or orange sort of red signs there either side of the taxiway don't really do anything except show you a taxiway number when you're coming out from the terminal but looking into the distance towards the threshold of runway 23 in the distance there you can see signage uh, the, the runway itself is reasonably well lit shouldn't really have a problem since you've got an ILS at this end of the runway so here you've got three buildings again with the same type of lighting as the other ones um, we'll show you them in a day in a moment just up near the water near the threshold of runway 23 and there is the threshold of runway 23 and you can see this additional lighting here on the approach and we've got these two signs so let's go and have a look at what's on there again two signs facing into the runway showing that this is taxiway bravo 
that leads into the wrong way. And again from the other side nothing at all showing at all. So there's an overview looking towards the uh, terminal area. We're at the threshold of runway 23, the other end, and that gives you the view. So this is a pretty dark place. Um, it's winter, so where this is really dark, as I said, you're going to rely on your nose gear light quite a lot after landing to find your way off the runway into the parking area. Lighting is adequate, that's probably the best I can describe it as. I mean that's fine, it's adequate on the ramp area for what you need to do, but nothing more. So this will be a little bit of a challenge um, uh, on, uh, during a night time landing. So I said we'd have a look at these buildings by the uh, threshold of runway 23 in the daytime and here they are. This is runway 23 threshold here. Again, in the daytime, beautiful detail, nicely done, everything crisp and clear that you can see. Fence line looks good. And as I said before, I, d I don't know about the elevation here, whether this has literally just been stuck on top and not properly terraformed. So as you can see, these are hangars. There's one aircraft in there. And they do look quite nice. Lovely little lake there to the left. And there's a view looking back down runway 23. This is 23 threshold here. This is taxiway Bravo that we saw the lights at, but really didn't do an awful lot. And this is taxiway Alpha. There's the main apron. But as you can see, it's a beautiful location. Really, really nice. There's the VOR station. So just a couple of quick shots around here from, from above so you can look at the lie of the land. It's really nice. Whole place looks just lovely. And there's the terminal, the main terminal ramp, um, sitting nicely there on a plateau. So just a high level view there showing you the terrain and what's nearby. Here's the airport here and here's the exit road that goes all the way out. So let's wrap this up and I'll give you my thoughts. This is what it looks like at around 7am local time in the winter here. Um, firstly the positives lovely little airport wonderful crisp clean modeling all over the external parts of the airport buildings signage roadways um, ramp signage runway um, and in a, another beautiful location um, I love the way it's been done and it's it's really really nice the downsides we may have elevation issues here um, <coughs> From my limited knowledge, it looks as though they haven't really um, terraformed the area to fit it properly, which is why um, the road outside here drops down this little cliff before it goes to the road there. doesn't quite match up with the road. A real surprise to find that the inside of the control tower has been done so nicely, and yet the wonderful buildings that they've modelled so beautifully on the outside internally practically don't exist. They're just the structure, but there's no internal work at all and yet they're asking us to pay 22 euros plus for this. Um, it's, uh, it's not worth the price. It's worth about 15 euros in my opinion, thinking about the uh, other sceneries. That would change if they finished this off, if they went inside and finished the interior of the terminal and completed the work, um, it would really, really improve it internal development of the main terminal and terraforming to get rid of the elevation issues I think would really bring it up to around 20 euros and I would be happy to pay that price but at the moment it's probably only worth about 15 euros it's a small airport there's not an awful lot here what has been here has been done beautifully well but like I said no interior modeling and the terrain issues the elevation issues terraforming or lack of it whatever it's called also are a little bit of a showstopper for me but that said it's a nice airport in a nice location and it's a place you know you want to eminently want to fly into and it's good to see another South African airport coming along so Pearl Simulations if you're listening um, you want to do an update do the inside of the terminal sort out the terraforming issues and maybe improve the lighting as well at night time the lighting is so violently yellow um, it, uh, it's, <laughs> it's, it's really overdone there if you improve those three things to an acceptable level then 15 euros does rapidly become 22-23 euros
even for such a small scenery because it's the quality of the work that that makes it possible so yes i do like it um that I, but i do have misgivings about it but as i said I've, I've got no qualms about having bought it um i have flown in here and we will be flying out of here shortly when we take the 737 back to cape town so if you're on the fence about whether you want to buy it depends how badly you want it it is a lovely airport um, but at 22 euros it's a bit expensive I'd like to see it maybe go on sale or as I said I'd like to see the developer really work on the uh, issues we've highlighted and that would more than justify the price so this is Lee your virtual airline pilot wrapping up another review of a beautifully done little scenery in a lovely location it does have issues but um, Thank you very much for joining me on this. I hope you found it interesting and useful. If you are sitting on the fence about buying this, I hope my review has helped you decide one way or the other. So thanks again for joining me. Um, I will see you in the next adventure or review video. Take care, stay safe, and bye for now.